uh, he is uh, a great orator and uh, known for his disclosures on Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Joshi holds an MSc degree in chemistry and MA degree in philosophy with specialization in Advaita Vedanta. He is pursuing PhD on Bhagavad Gita and in process he has extensively researched Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita. He started his career in 1978 as SORT inspector and later joined as a director recruit officer in United India Insurance Company Limited. In year 1981, of course, he became director recruit officer. He is currently working as a vice president in Deccan Insurance and the Insurance Brokers Limited. Yes. So with this introduction, let me invite uh, Mr. Joshi. Thank you, Dr. Joshi. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be with all of you here for this small presentation on the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, there is no final word on the Bhagavad Gita. It's a very, very deep-rooted science. And uh, as we unfold, you'll understand you know, how difficult the subject is. My job is to put the concepts before you. The idea is, the main purpose of the theme is to generate a very high level of confidence in all of you. And that is what Swami Vivekananda also did. He not only he has written extensively on the Bhagavad Gita, he has written on the Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga. Vivekananda is a known authority who took the Indian sciences abroad. And the entire world respects him. Today's lecture is dedicated to Swami Vivekananda. And I am sure that, you know, we will be... Uh, we'll keep the questions at the end. So, let the presentation unfold and uh, we can go ahead. In fact, uh, my opening sentence is from Swami Vivekananda himself. Each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest this divinity within and without by controlling the nature external and internal. You can do this by karma, work, or by worship, bhakti, or psychic control, as they call it, the dhyana yoga, or philosophy, that is jnana yoga, by one or more of all of these, and be free. This is the whole religion. Doctrines, dogmas, and rituals, or books, or temples, or forms, are but secondary details. Vivekananda's concepts were very clear. This is what is the sum and substance of our existence. We are the spark of divinity. We carry the infinite legacy of the supreme reality with us. He is everywhere. He is in all of us. And that is what Swami Vivekananda says. You discover it. And when you discover it, and when you know the heights and the levels at which you can go, I mean, that's mind-boggling. So, with a small reverence to Swami Vivekananda and his thoughts, we start the presentation. The trigger for the Mahabharat war, you are aware. A small game of dice, which went ugly. And then, what you have is something which should not have happened. But then, the resultant, the consequence of that was the Mahabharata war. And it was a destruction at the end of the day. The Kurukula was destroyed. Lot of other, you know, kings had sent their armies. So, but the trigger was this. The dignity of a woman has to be respected. And she is not an ordinary woman. She is the what do you call? She is Draupadi. She is your Kula Vadhu. And that is what Vidura said. What are you talking? How dare you call Draupadi here? Don't do it. And he walked away. Vidura, he has written Vidur Niti also. Some of you must have read it. He said, I can't, you can't do it. You can't convert the Kula Vadhu into a Dasi. Don't make the game of dice so serious. But nobody listened to him. And then what you find is a full scale war. And that is the trigger. And this is the background. The Bhagavad Gita has evolved out of the concept of and the inevitable compulsion of death. No being on this earth can claim that he will not die. This is the process, birth and death. And we are all part of the process. Right? So you can't just examine life. You have to, if you want a full 360 degrees clearance, 180 degrees is the life part, and the other part is that which is not seen. So, the full 360 degrees is, should be 
in the view. So that is what is put before you. The primary trigger for the explanation, for the exposition is the grief and despondency of Arjuna. When Arjuna found that his own brethren, when his own respected teachers, Dronacharya was there, Bhishma was there, he had played on the lap of Bhishma and you are telling me to kill them. He suddenly realized, my God, what am I doing? And he just kept his Gandhiv down and he said, sorry, I can't fight this war. war. It's a fratricidal war. And this is the Dharma Yuddha as they called it. What was the Dharma? Uphold of the Dharma, the dignity. See, you can't, and today that is the same problem everywhere. The dignity of the woman. Today you have a parliament ordinance coming because of that. See, remember, Dharma is something which is the base of all existence. And what is Dharma? Dharayati iti Dharma. We are all part of Dharma. The earth is doing its Dharma. It has to, you know, complete one rotation in 24 hours. 365 days, one full revolution of the sun. All, the entire galaxies, everything is part of Dharma. We are all doing the Dharma. Suppose the earth says, sorry, I am in enough. I don't want to rotate. Kal din Down. 365 days. All this is part of the universal Dharma. And Dharma has to be upheld and that is the reason why we have the concept of Avatara. Right? Lord Krishna himself says that when Adharma ex exceeds the dimensions and Dharma is subdued, I, am, I, am, I, I, am, I become incarnate, I am born in flesh and blood. So the entire Bhagavad Gita is, you know, like Krishna is, Krishna represents the Avatara, so he represents the supreme reality. And many of the words that you have, I have the Sanskrit shlokas also with me. You know, you find that Krishna is saying, I am this, I am doing this, I am the originator of this. Please remember, he is talking as an Avatara of the supreme reality, right? So it is basically the holy war and that was something which was the problem. Now the armies, both the armies are, you know, pitched against each other. And Arjun develops a despondency. Diplomacy had failed. Lord Krishna himself had gone. By, and we are not asking for Hastinapur. We are asking for Indraprastha. Hastinapur is yours. But why by a, with, with a game of dice you have taken away Hastinapur? Please give it back to the Pandavas. Nothing doing. I will not give back. Now that is something which started the, the that was the backdrop. And then this particular, the Bhagavad Gita is important because the background of the Bhagavad Gita is a battlefield. Bhagavad Gita was not taught in the Himalayas. It was not taught in the Syrian climate, you know, of the ashramas or the Himalayas. It was taught in the thick of a battlefield because after that it was bloodshed and war. Now that is the reality of life. We cannot run away from the problems of life. Life, you do not know what problems will come. The message of the Gita is, which I'll come to this. So, diplomacy had failed, either you relinquish or you fight the war. And that is what Krishna says. And this is the message of the Gita. Krishna explained the concepts of death, immortality, Paramatman, Jivatman. All these concepts were explained. And then he says, and Krishna also told them, this is my reality, this is my Vishwarupa. The Vishwarupa was shown to Arjuna. And then he folded his hands. Karishye vachanam tava. The Arjuna had kept his guard, Gandhi in the, you know, down. And Krishna told him, Nimit, Nimitta matram bhava savya sachin. I have already killed them. Dekh liya tumne? You have seen now what is the fate? I have already, you know, they are here to die. Because at the end of the day, dharma has to be uphold, upheld. There were so many people. Was Dronacharya not sitting in the Kuru Sabha? Was Bhishmacharya not sitting in the Kuru Sabha? And they were all scholars par excellence. How did they tolerate such a thing? It is Krishna because Draupadi is his, you know, sister. And he has to protect the dignity of his sister. And he protected it. Because that was the only solace left to her. And he protected it royally. And then, so he said, sorry. Now, these people, they have come here. And this is something which he said, Nimitta matram bhava sabya sachin. I have already done the job for you. Now you are going to take the credit, that's it. So please, and he, then he says, when he saw that Vishwarupa, he said, I now understood what you really are. He folded his hands and said, please come back to your normal. Because Divya Chakshu was given to him to see the super, the super normal, to see the supreme reality. You can't see it with the, you know, your normal senses. So 
what he says, Krishna says, and exhorting him to perform his destined duty in the spirit of Karma Yoga. What is the spirit of Karma Yoga? Maam Anusmara Yudhyacha. Maam Anusmara. Remember me. Mujhe yaad karo hamesha. Or yuddha bhi karo. Yudhyacha. Now you can, you can imagine the situation. Krishna is asking Arjuna to fight the war because that is his destined duty. But remember that you are doing it for my sake. It is for my sake. I have ordained it. So please do your duty. Maam Anusmara Yudhyacha. Please remember. This is the message of the Bhagavad Gita. In your life, in our lives, we have umpteen number of problems coming and going. Many times, you know, we succumb to that. Hamare yaha pe, I stay in Bombay. We have cases where a 32-year-old, you know, chartered accountant woman, you know, with two children, she jumps from the 19th floor and commits suicide. Where is the helplessness? What is the problem? There cannot be a problem in life which does not have a solution. You can't, you know, and then I, we find in Bombay people jumping before a local. Desperation leads them to a suicide. The problem is, suicide is not the solution to the problems of life. Look at this problem now. Arjuna wanted to run away. Why should I take all this burden on my head? I am prepared. That is what he says. I am prepared to beg, you know, for a living, but I want to kill my brethren. Let them enjoy. Let them enjoy Hasnapur as well as Indar Prastha. So please remember, Maam Anusmara Yudhyacha. Are, both the armies are standing in front, the conch shells have been blown, and then you are telling that, sorry, I don't want to fight the war. How is it possible? In life, sometimes we come into a catch-22 situation. Idhar khai, udhar kua. Face it, fight it. But then, if you take the ownership of that, then in that case, there will be tension. There will be so many problems. Ownership, aap mat lije. Ownership uska hai. Maam Anusmara Yudhyacha. You are doing, you are fighting the war for my sake. And look at that. With this as a message, actually what Vyasa did, the Bhagavad Gita is a summary of the Upanishads. Upanishads, you have different streams of thought and beautiful thinking, you know. All the Upanishads, the main Upanishads are 11 Upanishads. But he knew that, you know, see ultimately if somebody, by, if some, somebody is in a dire trouble, what do you try to do? You try to lift his spirits up. You try to bring him back to normal. You try to counsel him. You try to give him some good inputs. And that is the purpose. Vyasa said, it could have been you know, a small, you know, 10, 20 minutes episode. But he brought all the Upanishads, the, the, and he beautifully, you know, the different schools of thought were there. We had Bhakti Yoga, we had Jnana Yoga, we had Dhyana Yoga, and all these people said, no, my school is better. Bhakti Yoga is better. Dhyana Yoga is why do you want to fight? He integrated all those schools of thought. Vyasa did a wonderful job. He used Krishna as the mouthpiece to deliver this ultimate message. Because Krishna was the ultimate warrior of that time. There were different warriors. Yes, Bhishma was a warrior. Kansa was a warrior. What do you call it? So many warriors were there. But when Lord Krishna was there, see, you can, you know, I mean, if you go, go through the, uh, what you call Bhagwat and other, you find that Balram and Krishna, that the duo of Balram and Krishna was invincible. It was very difficult to defeat them. So Lord Krishna, the ultimate warrior, the biggest warrior of his time, is used to deliver the message of the Bhagavad Gita. So what is the message of the Bhagavad Gita? Maam Anusmara Yudhyacha. We start with this as a backdrop, and then the relevance of the Bhagavad Gita. What I have said, innumerable problems will come in life. Let us not run away from the problems of life. See, it's an evolving world. New challenges, globalization. Today you are in IIT Kanpur. Tomorrow you will be traveling the world. You will be in different, you know, you will be in different capacities working in, you know, major corporates. Now, the challenges will be huge. So, you should be geared up to face that. And what is important is, you should be able to fight the challenges of life without the collateral damage. Please remember, there should not be any physical or mental damage. Your body should be intact one piece. There should not be any physical or mental damage to it. You find people crumbling under psychological pressures, going into the drugs, going into drinks, cigarettes. My God, you know, they get ruined. So please remember, without collateral damage, if you want to face the problems of life, you have the fountain head inside. You have the spiritual energy inside. You can use, you can use that, no. Why do you want to rely on drugs? Or why do you want to rely on some external source? It will not give you ultimate relief. 
So the beauty is, without any collateral damage, if you want to solve it, then we have the spiritual message of the Bhagavad Gita, and that is why the Bhagavad Gita is life, live and vibrant, because it gives you the ultimate solution to the problems of life. And look how the solutions come. So the, the Gita helps us to find the right solutions with our innate nature and preferences, right? The, everybody has his own individual makeup, right? No two individuals will be the same. Even the twins will have some variation. Our innate nature, let it be whatever it is. The innate nature can be different. We are all individuals. We may be different at the superficial level. But please remember, at the core, we are all one. And the core is limitless. You can sap that energy and go on sapping it. Right? It will never end because that is the divine reality. So please remember, so the, at, at the same time cast our personality in the mold of the divine reality. So the divinity which we inherit, each of each one of us is inheriting that divinity. And that potential of that divinity is limitless. So the Gita launches a detailed exposition on for certain things. Before that, when we go into the Gita, you know, the Gita summarizes the concepts of the Upanishads. So in Hinduism, there are certain concepts which are the keynote. So you have not only one body, the physical, you have the physical, astral and the causal. There are three bodies, right? So the physical body comes and goes. It is the outer shell. But the astral body and the causal body continue. So it is you know, we have the concept of the three bodies. Then you have the five sheaths, the koshas, the annamaya kosh, the pranamaya kosh, the manomaya kosh, the vijnanamaya kosh, anandamaya kosh. So, the two prakritis. You have the concept of para prakriti and the apara prakriti, and then the unity of the pinda and brahmanda. Let me tell you. I am also a science student. I did my MSc chemistry. Science discovers. I am discovering. I am knowing. So I am different from that which I am knowing. There is a subject and there is an object. The object can be the body itself. Right? I am trying to find out how the body is made. I am trying to unravel the code in the genes, the genetic code. The entire genome project is there before you. The microcosm and the macrocosm are the subject of my study. Right? They are the object and I am studying it. You may have umpteen number of scholars working on the same project, but there is a subject-object duality. So please remember, this is something which is novel. What we say is, what is inside and what is outside is the same stuff. It is our imagination or our, you know, what you call illusion which creates the difference. Let us examine. My body is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, plus, plus other things. Your body is also made of that. Matter comprises of the same elements and we are all part of the same elements. Whatever is there, so anybody who understands that, okay, fine, there may be different bodies. But the body of a donkey, the body of a monkey, the body of a dog, the body of a fish, the body of a human being, this, these are the basic constituents. Please remember. So, what we are trying to say is, what is inside in the pinda? So you have, what are they in the pinda? You have the Annamaya Kosh, the Pranamaya Kosh, the Manomaya Kosh, the Vidyanamaya Kosh. My God, this body is a, only a small instrument. But look at the players. Ah, then it becomes live, you know. A dead body doesn't do anything. It can't even, you know, lift up a little finger. But liveness, dekho. Tumne mujhe mara? Main chhodunga nahi. I'll fight with you. Right? Either Obama or Osama will live. One has to die. You know, look at the amount of liveness that we bring to it. It cannot be the physical body which is lying dead. There are other forces which are paying. So what we are trying to say is, the Pinda and the Brahmanda, what is there in the cosmos and what is there inside you, is made of the same stuff. The first thing I started is the body. Annamaya Kosh. It is the same stuff. You try to analyze it further and then you find that yes, this concept is something which needs a deeper view. And then this is what is, you know, our thought process where we say that the empirical reality, knowledge of the empirical reality, the manifest reality is Vijnana. 
and dhyana is the knowledge of the supreme reality so the supreme reality and the empirical reality are two different concepts which will come you know later on so please remember and then we also have the cycle of birth and death right so our existence does not cease at the point of death existence continues that particular existence look at the dimensions of that that existence when the gita declares you will find so the ultimate aim of life is self realization if you go to the last slide the concluding remark was the liberation from birth and death see how long this process is going to be there birth is wonderful everybody likes it but then icu may admit hai counting the last breath the doctor has raised his hand boss we are trying our level best but there is no response from the other side what do you mean by the other side you have the best doctors working and the where is the other side then the other side is totally hidden he has already gone aapne usko ventilator pe rakha hua hai the ventilator is only giving you the feeling that he is alive and then suddenly the doctor says okay fine one day remove the ventilator and then the person is declared dead death certificate likh ke de diya fine you have done your formalities he doesn't want to stay in the body that body has become useless he has rejected it it's a question of rejection of the body it's not a question of a death death certificate is only a formality he doesn't want to stay in the body now so imagine this particular building is worth sitting tomorrow there's an earthquake the building crumbles right but rr joshi wants to stick into the building i would like to give a lecture kidhar kidhar lecture dega abhi building mein you don't have that ambience you don't have the sitting place space you know where, where will people sit but still i want to stick into it 80 years 85 years 90 years this body is not worth living now and suddenly he calls it quits this is the way we look at it it is my choice i don't want to live in the body it is not worth living accident ki wajah se the, the body has become useless i am rejecting it if because of the disease the body has become useless so the concept of death is viewed differently under the indian concept and at the end of the day how long is there anything beyond that and that is self realization and that is the aim of our life ultimate aim is self realization so with that as a background i'm just comparing gnana and vidnana science is vidnana and gnana is the knowledge of the self the subject knows <coughs> or tries to know the objective world i have explained that and the objective world includes the microcosm and also the macrocosm the human body consists of 1 trillion cells you have the genome project before you which is trying to analyze you have the cell you have the nucleus in that you have the chromosome in that you have the genes and from one amoeba from a single cell animal to the entire complex nature which is there before you they say that well the genetic code is something which is a gold mine let us go into that and that will explain how these things developed my god the human the human genome project was completed in 2003 now they are utilizing that to generate a liver or a kidney they are now playing at a very fundamental level microcosm science has you know gone way ahead in that but this is something which is the microcosm as far as the macrocosm is concerned there cannot be a better better authority than dr stephen hawking dr stephen hawking is a classic case his entire body is paralyzed right but he is the most fertile brain around and this is something which beats reason i think i was told i the last i read was with the twitch of his cheek he is generating you know messages and that the computer decodes and that is how you know the books are being written but look at the amount of you know knowledge that he has generated and this is what he has to say to discover a complete theory of the cosmos which will tell us why the universe exists and this would be the ultimate triumph of the human reason for then we would know the mind of god we would know the mind of god i am different i am trying to know see science ultimately has stopped at the subject object duality i am knowing i am different from that which i know that duality is there in vidnana so gita also explains vidnana gnana and vidnana both are explained there but then what is gnana gnana is this gnana is knowledge of the self 
Jnana is the realization that the individual self is equal to the universal self, is equal to the self of all. I have also brought, you know, thought processes from Vivekananda himself. You know, by the close of the lecture, you'll understand. Look at the level at which we are going. We are individually, we are different. We look as different. But it is the same reality, one same seamless reality which is pervading everything. When you touch that level, that is the level which is the ultimate level. So the jnana takes you to that and that is the realization. And here jnana leads from asat to sat. It is not asatya or satya. These are asat and sat. Asatoma, sat gamaya. From asat, let me go to sat. Tamasoma, jyotir gamaya. From darkness, let me go to light. Mrutyorma, amrutam gamaya. These are the three concepts which we are reciting every day. Mrutyorma, amrutam gamaya. From death, let me go to immortality. There is a purpose behind that. What is asat? What is sat? The Gita starts with the concept of sat and asat. Chapter number 2, shloka number 16. Asat and Sat. See, the, 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 you know, he starts with a sixer. The despondency of Arjuna and then he explains to Arjuna. He says, you are talking like a knowledgeable person, but your actions don't reflect that. You are talking of death, Marunga, Marunga, I'll kill, you know, mortality. You know, what is this? And then he starts, the opening sentence is beautiful. So the concept of Sat and Asat and then it leads us from the world of subject-object duality to the world of supreme reality and it leads from mortality to immortality and this is the sum and substance. Jnana basically goes to the root of the difference. It goes beyond the subject-object duality. It discovers the essential symphony between the micro and the macro, uh, the subject and the object and then also it embraces, it goes beyond that to embrace that particular underlying principle which is at the root of that. When you reach that level where there is no subject-object duality, if I and he are the same, who will talk about it? Who will explain it? Who will fight with it? Who will fight with it? Who will fight with it? When the subject-object duality is lost, that is the level where there cannot be any fights, there cannot be any differences, there cannot be... That is what he says, Yadnevalka tells Maitreyi, as long as the difference is there, tat itaram itaram pashyati, tat itaram itaram jighrati, as long as there is a difference. But then what he tells Maitreyi, are va, you know, atma va are drashtavya shrotavyo nididhyasitavyo Maitreyi, that is the thing. And beautifully he says, nava are patyu kamaya pati priyo bhavati, atmanastu kamaya pati priyo bhavati. Nava are bharya ya kama ya bharya ni priyani bhavanti. Atmanas tu kama. Everything is for the Atman. As long as I want. See ultimately kya? Everything. I am working. I have a flat. I have a car. I am the registered owner of flat. Hurt jage mera thakpa laga hua hai. RR Joshi. Registered owner. Registered owner of the flat. Registered owner of the vehicle. Mera hai. Right? I create a world of my own. Right? And then one fine day I disown it. Abhi mera kaisa koi relationship nahi hai. Use and throw. Admi jane ke baad, abhi Dhirubhai Ambani was, you know, left a legacy of a huge empire. After Dhirubhai Empire, uh, after Dhirubhai Empire, uh, Dhirubhai Ambani expired, the empire broke into two. After the person goes, lot of things will happen. He is giving his ownership. But after 200 years, or after 300 years, or after 400 years, ek jamane mein Kanpur, Bithur, right? It was, a different situation. Now today Kanpur is in a different situation. After another 500 years, we do not know how the situation will be. So time is something which is the real deciding factor. And then the problem defined. This is how, you know, the concepts are unfolding. Everybody, all of us sometimes, kabhi kabhi aapne socha hoga, what is existence? What is death? Why do we die? Can we conquer death? And if at all, we want to conquer death, how do we conquer death? And the Indian rishis, they look at Dr. Stephen Hawking. He is in a samadhi. His body is totally dysfunctional. His mind is very active. And that is the job of the yogi. He is a seer. He sees reality. He doesn't study it. He sees it one to one. 
Now that is the level of the intellect which he has developed and they went into finance, meditation, self-experience, self-control and we are very small before them. But the legacy because, you know, the, you know, in the Indian tradition there have been yogis who have lived for, you know, as, num as number of years that they wanted. So these are the yogis and this is what they put in a nutshell. That boss, neen me se jago, kab tak sapna dekhoge? Come out of this and then they discovered that the individual self is the universal self and that is the self of all. They discovered the universality everywhere and when they discovered that universality, they said, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Right? And then the Guru tells us, Shweta Keto, Tattvamasi Shweta Keto, Chandogya Upanishad. You are also that, discover it. Aham Brahmasmi, Tattvamasi Shweta Keto, Sarvam Khalvidam Brahma. These are the concepts which have evolved thousands of years back on our subcontinent. So that is something where, you know, we need to touch upon and we'll get the idea. So for the common man, obviously, you know, we have, we are a slow local. Dheere chalti hai. Hai na? Fast local nahi hai. To aap ke liye, you know, the process is the four ashramas and the four purusharthas which are laid down for the common person. And the quest to conquer death is summed up in the three shlokas, as I said. Remember them, Asatoma Asat Gamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, and Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya. The four Purusharthas, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. The fourth one is the most difficult. Because Dharma, Artha and Kam are external oriented. I earn money. You are studying, students, you are studying. Tomorrow you will get jobs. Right? Dharma, Artha. Wonderful. Dharma, Artha and Kam are Purusharthas which are external. Moksha. For Moksha, Moksha arthe prithivi tyajet. If tomorrow I have to relinquish my empire, because jitna kamaya hai, right? Bill Gates is worth 75 billion dollars, right? Today he is thinking of charity. Warren Buffet, he is pledging most, almost 80, 80, 90 percent of his wealth for charity. He understands. Warren Buffet kitne din jinda rehne wala hai? He wants to live forever by donating his wealth. See, look at that. Now, that is something. Then, first question, why did he earn then? If he wants to donate. See, that is the concept. For moksha, aapne kitna earn kiya? Aapka, you, you are in the Forbes list for the last 40 years. That is not the criteria. For moksha, the criteria is the spiritual wealth. And that spiritual wealth is something which does not have any value, right? Tomorrow, you, I make you the owner of the earth, right? Or usi ka me chota sa ek sona nikal ke aur aapko matlab chadhata hoon. That is something. You go to the temple, aap usko sone ka mukut chadhate hain. Ultimately, he is the owner of the universe. What can you give him? You give him, aap, you know, you go to Shirdi Sai Baba, give a check of 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs. You are giving him peanuts. I mean, ek you know, who is a billionaire. He is the owner of the universe. He doesn't want anything from you. And that is something which Vivekananda said right away. So the four ashramas, Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyas. Now, this is a life of 100 years. Presuming a life of 100 years, the four ashramas, 25, 25, 25, 25. 100 years? I don't find people living 100 years. We probably have a reasonable age limit of around 75 years. So the clock is ticking for everybody. With 75 as a benchmark, if you want to live the full concept, as a sannyasi, you don't have to go to the forest. It is basically at, at the level of the mind, the level of the intellect. So you can sit here and meditate. You can be in your house and meditate. It is basically, you know, relinquishment. I don't want this. I've used it enough. That's it. So, you don't need to retire into the Himalayas for that. These are basically the concepts which can be practiced anywhere and everywhere. So, these are the points for consideration. Bondage arises due to a crisis of false identity. Please remember this. We'll come back to it at the end. And then, <coughs> this is how I define the physical body. Or rather, the Bhagavad Gita unfolds that the physical body is not just flesh and blood. This physical body is not just flesh and blood. Right? So, there's a lot of software, you know, a lot of, you know, other things there. See, in a, in a, in a small laptop, you know, I can carry a lot of material. 
no i don't know much of it but dr samir kandekar and you know you know he will be able to pack in lot of things in that now this is a gold mine for him right so this laptop has a wealth of information my son tells me dad why are you purchasing books right he downloads some of the best books up and he you know gets a soft copy of that and he reads it from that now there's a wealth of knowledge there i probably spend money to purchase it he has got it now this is something the entire wealth of the world of the universe is captivated inside you have to unfold it one by one so please remember it's an instrument for performing action karma now the gita says gahana karmano gati remember karma is something my god you know the to define karma nahi kashchit kshanam api you there is not a single moment when you know nobody will be doing karma you will be doing karma you can't escape from karma karma is something which is driven by nature gunas the three gunas so nahi kashchit kshanam api jatu tishtati akarma krut इट के नॉट बी दैट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आप देखिए कहीं भी जाइए हर एक आदमी कर्मा कर रहा है पृथ्वी भी कर्मा कर रही है सूर्य भी कर्मा कर रहा है एवरी बडी इज ड्रिवेन बाय दैट कर्मा एंड आपने बोला नहीं अभी मैं कर्मा नहीं करूंगा हाउ इज इट पॉसिबल आप सोएंगे जागेंगे खाना खाएंगे दैट इज ऑल्सो कर्मा इट इज इम्पॉसिबल दैट वी विदाउट रिमेन विदाउट कर्मा सो द इंस्ट्रूमेंट फॉर परफॉर्मिंग एक्शन और कर्मा and then you have our i mean i am trying to put it in the scientific language our dedicated laptop for the cosmic world interface internet inter internet what i am trying to say is as long as the person exists physically you can interact with him right but the person is dead and gone you only have memories you can't interact with him no you may have some you know series and you know that but technically speaking as long as the physical existence is there the interaction will be there you will have you know you know uh, friendly fights or whatever it is you will have your comrade eri so please remember it's the and you know we have all gone through that you have a friend and suddenly you know he dies in an accident and you miss him a lot that's it so the physical body is basically like your interface and that is something <coughs> the field and playground please remember यहाँ पे और भी बहुत पावरफुल चीजें काम कर रही हैं देर इज द प्राणा देर इज द माइंड देर इज द इंटेलेक्ट देर इज द ईगो एंड देर इज द आत्मन एट द एंड सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट ये पांच फुट का शरीर है इट हैज लॉट ऑफ बिल्ट इन एनर्जी इन टू इट सो ये जो है द स्पिरिचुअल पाथ सो द स्पिरिचुअल पाथ लीड्स अस फ्रॉम असत टू सत बॉन्डेज टू लिबरेशन द डार्कनेस ऑफ माया टू द लाइट ऑफ सुप्रीम रियालिटी and death to immortality right with this as a backdrop the main tenet of the bhagavad gita is now coming before you nasato vidyate bhavo na abhavo vidyate satah ubhayoropi drishtonta tanayo tatva darshi bhi nasato na asato vidyate bhavo the asat does not have any existence my god what a declaration asato ma sat gamaya and then you say asat hai nahi the asat is a mirage it's an illusion the sat is the reality which was always there which was there earlier which was there now and which will be, be, be there in the future right the the sat can never be destroyed and the asat has no existence shloka 216 of the bhagavad gita very important shloka nasato vidyate bhavo and then avinashitu tadviddhi yena sarvam idam tatam विनाशम अव्ययस्यास्य न कश्चित कर्तुम अर्हति उसको कोई डिस्ट्रॉय नहीं कर सकता ये बॉडी आएगा जाएगा इसको डिस्ट्रॉय कर सकते हैं यू कैन डिस्ट्रॉय एवरी अदर थिंग बट यू कैन नॉट डिस्ट्रॉय दैट अविनाश दैट दैट सुप्रीम रियालिटी एंड दैट सुप्रीम रियालिटी इज द इटरनल विटनेस ऑफ ऑल दीज थिंग्स विच आर हैपनिंग इन द यूनिवर्स बिकॉज दैट इज हिस्स क्रिएशन and he stands as an eternal witness to his creation avinashitu tadviddhi no that alone to be indestructible by which all this universe is pervaded and none has the power to cause the destruction of this imperishable that is something which is brought in the bhagavad gita right away and then the supreme reality is that sat which never ceases to be and that is our storehouse we are part of that we need to discover it supreme reality is the sat and self realization is the realization of our essential unity with that avinashitu tadviddhi yena sarvam idam tatam the moment you realize that the dream is over 
आप सपना जो है उसका गायब हो गया एंड देन यू वेक अप सो दिस इज अ पिक्चर इज वट यू कॉल दिस थिंग विच वी शो लॉर्ड विष्णु रिलैक्सिंग द सुप्रीम रियालिटी डज नॉट डू एनी थिंग इट्स निर्गुणा ब्रह्मा द गुणाज इट इज द शक्ति विच ही हैज क्रिएटेड विच इज मैनेजिंग द होल शो एंड दैट इज द सो दीज आर द इसेंशियल कॉन्सेप्ट सुप्रीम रियालिटी एम्पेरिकल रियालिटी जीवात्मन एंड देन द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द टू the concept of maya and then the paths to liberation the gita deals with all these areas right so actually it's a very what uh, a deep rooted science and uh, you need to spend some more time on that so the supreme reality there is another way of putting it i am using some what you call images before you lord shiva in meditation right not doing anything so the 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 shiva, the shiva puran says that shiva represents the nirguna brahma and it is the shakti which you, you know which which is managing the whole thing the vaishnav thought is the lord vishnu on the shesha shai relaxing and then the brahma from the nabi kamal right so these are basically just to explain they are trying to explain the concept which are here before you this is what the gita has to say about the supreme reality know that all beings have evolved from this twofold prakriti and i am the source of evolution and dissolution of the whole evil universe i will when i am discussing with empirical reality i i'll come to the two prakritis para and apara and then here he says there is nothing else besides me or dhananjaya all this is strung in me as clusters of gems on a string right so it is me and me everywhere that's it that is the the thing which he would like to tell again and again the be all and the end end all of all existence the supreme reality as a super magician he is very wise he is not he can't be seen you can't use your eyes and ears you know ki bhai this is brahman this is supreme reality no 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 you can't show it like that you have to realize it the word is realization so please remember all this world is pervaded by me as unmanifest divinity but i do not dwell in them it's my creation i am the efficient cause of the universe but i am not the material cause i am there but i am also not there i do not dwell in them that is what he declares nachamasthani bhutani pashyame yogameshwaram behold my divine yogamaya i hide myself in reality and though i am the sustainer and creator of all beings i do not dwell in them though i am the efficient cause of the universe we have an efficient cause and a material cause this problem has been there so many scholars have applied their mind some say he is the efficient cause as well as the material cause right fine that is their way of it but this is what the gita says the gita says that i have designed all this but i am a witness to the design it is running i have done it i have started the process i witness it but i am unaffected by it the sun is the eternal witness of all the things that are happening in india right 2014 elections we do not know who will win right the sun is an eternal witness to all the phenomenon which has taken place on the earth and which will take place in future my question is do you think that the sun is affected by what is happening or what will happen tomorrow in 2014 is the sun affected by that बट कल अगर सनराइज नहीं हुआ तो द अर्थ रिफ्यूज इज टू स्पिन वेर इज टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन द टाइम एंटायर टाइम डायमेंशन इज बेस्ड अपॉन द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट येस वी हैव अ सोलर सिस्टम एंड वी हैव द यू नो दीज प्रोसेस इज गोइंग ऑन बट टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन होने के लिए इवन दो सम पार्टीज वॉन्ट द इलेक्शन दिस ईयर if 2014 the election is destined they have to wait for the earth to complete so many rotations and the revolution tab ja ke 2014 aayega it has to come no it has to come physically it has to actually happen as a process mind you aap usko fast forward nahi kar sakte can i tell the earth boss abhi fast chalo i want the election in october no so please remember behold my yoga maya right in reality though i am the sustainer but still i am not in that and then he is giving an example just as the extensive air being born of space rests always in space likewise know that all beings evolve 
and rest in me okay so there is another concept which is mentioned in the 8th chapter you have the avyakta avyakta is that which is unmanifest from that the universe started you have the big bang right abhi anybody can ask big bang ke pehle kya tha malum nahi the big bang is the 14 billion years back where we have gone and we find that the universe started with a big bang okay and then you have the inflation and then today the galaxies are expanding and then the question is whether this is going to go and end on now the thing is you don't have the mathematical equations to go beyond uske piche aap nahi ja sakte beyond the big bang you can't go presently that is the situation now all these you know scientists are trying to you know bring up all those concepts we will also discuss that but the thing is there is a manifest <coughs> unmanifest that is called the avyakta and beyond that avyakta is the sanatan avyakta so the supreme reality res- the reflects the sanatan avyakta sanatan avyakta means the eternal witness he is always there he is the eternal witness to the process the process is within the avyakta that is the unmanifest brahma as they call it so the concept of the avyakta and the sanatan avyakta and this is how i have put it here you have what do you call brahma and here you have vishnu and that nabhi kamal the nabhi kamal the nal as they call it i have started the process so you have because he says that is my supreme abode and they who reach this supreme abode never again return to this mortal world so he wants the transition from this to this from the avyakta to the sanatan avyakta you have to touch that base only then the process stops so i have used another you know dimension aap kya dekh rahe hain isme you find that this is relaxed not doing anything but then ah so many hands look at the look at look at the, suppose you say she is the shakti she is managing are ek ghar chalana mushkil hota hai if you have you know four children my god they create a mess for you she has to manage the galaxy she has to manage the planet she has to manage so many creatures being born and you know my god kaise manage karti hogi imagine that that shakti is there and that shakti is managing the entire universe comprising of you know all these things and everything is processed everything is programmed mind you and it sometimes sometimes hits you very badly you know you find people struggling abhi 10 minute aakhri ke 10 minute baki hai zindagi ke life only 10 minutes and then he says boss ye bank mein mera 10 crore rupya hai isme mera 20 crore he is trying to you know sort out all those things 10 minute mein kya hone wala hai 5 minute mein kya hone wala hai when the time comes sorry boss time ho gaya abhi jaiye aap that's it ye sab hisab kitab forget it dead and gone her rules are sacrosanct she may not she will not change it agar aisa agar concession dene lag gayi तो देन भगवान राम बुडेव से डी नहीं चौदह साल का वन बॉस दैट इज टू मच इसको कम करो जरा थोड़ा नो कंसेशन फोर्टीन इयर्स कृष्णा टू यू नो उसके कंस जो होते उसके मामा थे एंड ही पुट्स देवकी एंड वसुदेव इन प्रिजन एंड टू लिबरेट देम फ्रॉम द प्रिजन लुक एट द चैलेंज पहले मामा को मारो ओनली देन यू कैन अरे कैन यू इमेजिन अ चाइल्ड हु has not seen his पेरेंट्स एंड टू सी हिज पेरेंट्स ही हैज टू क्रॉस द बैरियर ऑफ किलिंग हिज ओन uncle maternal uncle but then that is his destiny he can't escape it now this is something which is the hard fact of life all of us understand please remember she will not change her rules why should she change her rules these rules are part of the whole process and we are all you know we have to go by that that is the shakti and this is the empirical reality which i said see he is beyond maya so within the sphere of maya she is like the managing director who is operating in the universe and this is how it is described bhumi rapo nalo vayu khammano buddhi revacha ahankara iti yamme bhinna prakruti ashtada see it is the ashtada prakruti see look how how deep 
our what you call rishis had gone you have earth water fire air space mind intellect and ego my god that particular air right yeah gaseous state and then the fire tremendous amount of heat and then the inflation and the cooling of the universe and then because of the cooling then the formation of the atoms the nuclei the galaxies the planets so it is not air water the way i understand that this is water no it is trying to tell you the process you have and look at it starts where the ego abhi kahan tak jana hai dekhiye the ego the mind the intellect the mind and then the further constituents probably science is very comfortable till this but mind yeah i I'll, i'll 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 throw some concepts before you it is just a thought process but i want to churn your you know mind process because of that i'm just trying to try to pick you up and put it put you in the the level of the mind the dimension of the mind the intellect and the ego so this is the eight fold prakriti the apara prakriti and this is something which is fantastic there is a a para prakriti also the para prakriti is the jiva bhuta the spiritual nature and this para prakriti is creating organic matter out of the inorganic stuff i have a cell i have a nucleus i have all the ingredients for the functioning of the cell right but how do i pump in life into that that is still a major question i can pump a virus into a leaf and the virus will grow and the leaf will be destroyed that virus can be kept in the laboratory in a crystalline form the moment it is pumped into a particular system it starts killing the system the microbes my god most of the diseases that we are still fighting are basically because of the microbes because of the bacteria because of the virus wo chhota sa virus jo hai wo bhi intelligent hai it knows agar aapne usko fight karne ka agar suppose you you know you you design antibiotics now you have a tb right it is multi drug resistant tb it has become resistant ek aap bachcho ko aap maarne ke liye agar dawai banate ho it you know gets <coughs> it get gets modified in such a way that it is able to fight back now how do you how do you take care of that so please remember there is an apara prakriti and there is a para prakriti the para prakriti is hidden from your view but that para prakriti is something which is there and that para prakriti will come in a in a different form later on and that is what he says both these prakritis are mine i am the originator of both these prakritis and the supreme reality i just try to you know a small recap so you have the supreme reality the nirgun brahma and then you have the apara prakriti the apara prakriti as we have seen you know the sattva rajas and tamas this is something which is at a very very fundamental level it is at such a level where the three gunas there is a avyakta out of that you you know the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas are in equilibrium at the avyakta stage and then the equilibrium gets disturbed the sattva and rajas and tamas they become active and then they generate the eight fold prakriti so the trigunatmak prakriti is the maya as they call it the triguna the, these gunas are available everywhere there cannot be a person who says i am 100% sattva no if he is 98% sattva there will be 2% rajas and tamas also राइट दीज थ्री गुनाज बैलेंस इच अदर तो कोई आदमी 98 परसेंट तमस होगा सत्व और रज थोड़ा थोड़ा होगा बट वी आर ऑल पार्ट ऑफ द गुनाज वी आर बेसिकली वर्किंग विद इन द स्पियर ऑफ द गुनाज एंड द एट फोल्ड प्रकृति प्लीज रिमेंबर आई हैव ट्राइड टू एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट टू यू एंड दिस बियॉन्ड दैट इज ऑल्सो द जीव भूता और द परा प्रकृति तो द नेचर ऑफ द एम्पेरिकल रियालिटी अनदर कॉन्सेप्ट इज कमिंग बिफोर यू इन चैप्टर एट नाउ दिस इज अ डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट स्लाइटली डिफरेंट there are certain words which are there akshar see i i try to tell you how did the universe originate what is avyakta what are the see so they they broke down the concepts into six five six major constituents the akshar is the brahma or the imperishable reality that is the unmanifest right the swabhav 
स्वभाव वस्तु प्रवर्तते आई डू अ कर्मा राइट द फ्रूट ऑफ दैट कर्मा इज डिलीवर्ड बाय द स्वभावा द द द सुप्रीम डेटी डज नॉट टेक द ओनरशिप ऑफ द कर्मा व्हाट एवर कर्मा यू डू इज यू नो द द फ्रूट ऑफ दैट कर्मा कम्स टू यू प्रॉब्ली इन अ डिफरेंट वर्क ऑन इन सम अदर वे इट इज द स्वभाव व्हिच इज द प्रोग्राम द डिजाइन प्रोग्राम व्हिच इज मैनेजिंग द होल थिंग सो द अक्षर इज देयर द स्वभाव इज देयर and then that is called the adhyatma and then you have the karma the discharge because we believe in the oscillating universe there is a kalpa right the beginning of the kalpa the end of the kalpa and you know the brahma divas and the brahma ratri it will come later on and then you have the adhibhuta which constitutes my material or perishable nature all matter right so material nature and the immaterial or the spiritual nature which is the adhidaiva and i am there sitting there i and i dwelling as the inner witness in this body is the adhiyagnya the adhiyagnya is the eternal witness to all this phenomenon and he is driving it but he is not the material cause he is the efficient cause yes it is all his so the adhibhuta i try to you know put it As a, as a graphic representation, the adi bhuta, the adi daiva, the adi adnya at the core, at the center, and then you have the akshar brahma or the mula prakriti, the karma which is also called visarga, and the adhyatma or sabha. These are the principles which are again elucidated. So you have the para prakriti, the apara prakriti, and this is another way of what you call explaining that. Now, in the Bhagavad Gita, they have discussed this particular kalpa. as they call it the oscillating universe right so you have all beings they start from the primordial nature mula prakruti and at the end of the kalpa they again withdraw into that and manifest so coming out going back and that is the and then since i stand like an indifferent witness unattached with these acts they do not bind me so he again repeats that i am the and attached to witness but just to you know make the concept clear he says with me as her supervisor prakriti brings forth the whole creation consisting of the mobile and immobile beings and it is because of this o konteya that the wheel of sansara revolves on and on so the empirical reality has all these dimensions and then you have the the vedas and you know the upanishads and puranas have talked about the kalpa that is the cosmic day of the brahman which you know you have the the mathematics is given to you it comes to 4.32 billion years the cosmic day and for the equal period cosmic night so the kalpa is a 360 degrees cosmic day cosmic night cosmic day cosmic night ye chalta rehta hai okay so just what we had discussed because since we are going with the concept of the oscillating universe this is just you know the concept before you which i have already discussed the evolution of the universe the way that science has explained it okay and then the distances you are aware 